25 years of age. But evenly matched in terms of height and weight. Maybe a slight weight advantage for Jacob Couch. And our referee Steve Hodgett is ready to ready? get things underway. Ready? Fight! Middleweight match, 185 pounds. In the white is Jacob Rodriguez representing B-Team. In the black and red is Jacob Couch, a.k.a. Hillbilly Haller. One of the best nicknames in all of grappling. Yeah, without question. And in the past, we would have said this is a classic match between top player and leg locker, and Jacob Couch being the strong leg locker here, but he's definitely been putting work on the feet and his top game as well as he eyes ADCC as the ultimate prize. <laughs> and he goes back to his favorite home base here. And Jay Ruff, for his part, loves the body lock passing and wants to end up on the back. So, you know, I feel that uh, this is one of those matches that you would definitely say it's a style versus style. Because, yes, of course, Jacob Couch can wrestle. Yes, of course, he works his top game just like everybody else does in jiu-jitsu. But his favorite attacks, the attacks that he, he prefers to compete, uh, to, to attack from, prefers to work from, he's really all about that that leg lock game he's had some of his most significant victories have come by leg lock although here on who's number one he has also won by arm lock an upper body attack against hunter colvin last year october of 2021 from a very similar position to what we see now very good shoulder crunch kind of going high the legs but j-rod jacob rodriguez is he better known j-rod as do many of the B team guys. Man, they're so good at this body lock passing style. They just shut that down. They make guard work miserable, right? With the hands clasped beneath the back and spying of Jacob Couch. It really makes things kind of uncomfortable. We see Jacob thinking a little bit about the guillotine there. But another thing about J-Rod that is true is that you nearly have to put him all the way unconscious. He will not tap to anything. You've seen that many times over. But he's getting a little comfortable here. And Jacob starts looking at that neck a little more closely. I think... Not quite deep enough, but again, Jacob showing his intentions early here as he keeps uh, Rodriguez stuck in that powerful close guard. And I think it's actually smart strategy from Couch to not give Rodriguez space. One thing that Rodriguez has done is he came into the grappling game just, I think, less than two years ago, really, in terms of like full-time grappling experience. And uh, much like his brother, had a, uh, a wrestling background, but not to any particular high level. You know, both of them, they ni neither of them wrestled in college, really. They're just high school wrestlers. But they were able to take that energy and that work rate and apply it in the grappling scene so well. And, well, we've seen it from J-Rod, that you give him space and he, he has that youthful energy, explosiveness, coupled with that kind of those wrestling instincts. In the grappling arena, he is overwhelming at times. And... Uh, I think Couch is being very smart in tying him up and trying not to give him any space because if he does, it could be a bad day. Jacob Rodriguez has had a total of eight matches on the Who's Number One mats. J-Rod, on the other hand, had won a couple of weeks ago, a 15-minute decision loss to Giancarlo Bodoni, and as you mentioned, a possible fight nice. of the year contender and nice. one match, closed door match in the early elimination phase of Who's Next, the reality show, the series that we had on Flow Grappling. It's good to see these emerging professionals here on the Who's Number One stage, because I think J-Rod made such a statement at the ADCC trials. People are very, look at this Kimura attack here from Couch. He's got a decent connection to that arm. What do you think, Jake, something here? A little hard to say, but the primary battle for Couch has been to separate this by like pass, and right there nearly got the extension away from the hip to create a, a little more control. But right now, he's really shutting down the offense of, of, of J Rod. J Rod is unable to really get anything going, and Jacob has to separate those hands, which he's done quite nicely here. You can see in the background, you can see that Heath Pedigo, the uh, Pedigo submission fighting coach and founder, in the corner of Jacob Couch, in the corner of J Rod. Nikki Ryan and oh. Craig Jones. Oh, look at this Kamura attack here. Kamura attack from Couch. Reverse his position now into the mount. That was a decent crank on that arm. So he's swept J-Rod now. He's in the control position, but that submission attack is potentially still active. 100%. J-Rod is certainly not out of danger here. This is a tough spot to be in. This Couch applying all of his weight now. Also applying what looks to be a body triangle. 
this is this is very tight. Yeah, this is a tough position to get out of because should J-Rod try to hip bump and escape, it could give Couch the space he needs to get that oh, arm lock. Oh. We may see a submission here. He had full extension on that arm right here. This is a very perilous position for, for Jacob Rodriguez. Of course, the judges favor no, no doubt at all that Jacob Couch gets the judges favor. This sweep into the mount of this active submission attack here. This is deep water for J-Rod. Calmly defending here, but we saw there was a moment when that arm got straightened out. There's a lot going on here. Couch could get the rotation on the shoulder. He could get a straight arm lock attack against the elbow joint. It's a powerful attack position. Jacob's got a lot of weapons here, right? And he's being very patient. He knows he's in the driver's seat, and he may not get another shot quite like this. So it makes sense that he's taking the time to establish the control and work another attack shortly. We hear the crowd applauding because Jacob Rodriguez has managed to escape the submission attack and is now being pinned. Couch has the cross face and underhook control. And you can see a great view here of that upper body pin riding the torso. It's mount position. I'm wondering, Chase, the fact that Couch has a total of eight matches under who's, one, who's number one rules. I'm wondering whether that experience was a factor going into this match here because he just looks so calm. Oh, he's certainly employing a tactic we saw in one of his most recent matches at WNO, which was against Gordon Ryan, which saw Couch on the reverse position we, we're looking at right now. And that was a lot of pressure on top and all revolved around uh, separating the elbow from the hips or sides there for Jacob Rodriguez's position on bottom. It's a difficult position to, to maintain a solid defense, and nice. Jacob has no problem, excuse me, Jacob Couch has no problem just pouring the pressure on here, making things miserable, because he's felt that very same sensation himself. Yeah, Gordon Ryan really redefined what was possible in submission grappling with the use of the mount position. It was a kind of a position that fell out of favor in the grappling scene, I would say. You know, the, uh, certainly was a favorite of one of the greatest of all time, Roger Gracie. He used it in both Gi and No Gi, and it wasn't really until Gordon Ryan started utilizing it again this year that people were like, oh, wow, yeah, you can do a lot from the mount. I think Jacob Couch has maybe taken some inspiration from that, including his match against Gordon Ryan here in Frisco, Texas in March of this year. He felt firsthand just how effective that mount position could be. A very different looking mount to that, of course, of Gordon Ryan. But you can see that he's trying to get the separation of the elbow away from the upper body. He's got the underhook with his right arm. And he's trying to bring his legs higher up the torso and underneath the armpits. And that separation, really, that's where the submission going to ta attacks are going to start from, right, Chase? Yeah, without question. Plus, it just makes breathing more difficult on bottom. We saw Gordon in an attempt to smother his opponents in the past. Uh, Giancarlo, his teammate, was able to pull that off in another competition very recently. So th there's an ongoing war here, basically, for, for J-Rod on bottom. Just trying to survive and maintain a cool head as he gets uh, actual defense in as well. I think that Couch will have seen that match, J-Rod versus Giancarlo, from a couple of weeks ago, and probably learned a lot from that in that Number one, Jacob Rodriguez is incredibly difficult to submit. He was in some dead to rights rear naked chokes against Giancarlo Bodoni, and he was able to find his way out time and time again. Now, this is good work from Couch. He's going high, could be in the beginning stages of an arm triangle Katakatami style choke, but Jacob Couch will have watched that match, I'm sure, and learned a lot, is that number one, J-Rod is really, really resilient under pressure. Number two, that if you give him the slightest opportunity to escape, he can turn the tables very quickly. I remember there was a moment in that earlier match that J-Rod, man, he just slipped out and he was straight on Giancarlo's back. And it was like, it's like deja vu, we've seen the same thing, but from the other side, and I'm sure Couch will want to avoid that. Oh, now we see him going for the arm triangle. He's managed to get that elbow very, very high now. Yeah, this is looking better and better for Couch here on top. The choke may be starting to sink in here as Couch starts to drop his hips, drop the pressure. Jacob doing his best to do the telephone defense here, but again, that may be tight, may be on. 
and what a redemption arc for Jacob Couch, right? His last WNO appearance did not go his way, and he took a, some serious criticism online for that, and he came back and is really looking incredible right now. Jacob Couch is looking definitely for something specific, and we're going to get our second judge's favor. Judge's favor forever. Yeah, no surprise at all after such a dominant period in the mount. A full five minutes after that Kimura sweep from the guard into this mount position. And again now, this arm triangle choke. Okay, now I see that Couch dropped his head there. He's got his ear, his left ear, against the tricep of Jacob Rodriguez. He's looking to punch that left arm deeper to try and cut off the carotid artery on the side of the neck and to use his head and to push the upper arm into the other side of J-Rod's neck. That's, that's really where the pressure for this choke comes from. And you can see the effects of the pressure on the face of J-Rod, but it's not quite there yet, Chase. And this shows the poise of Jacob Couch. Some, some competitors would have maybe abandoned this attack and tried to switch things up and get a little frustrated that they can't get the immediate finish. But he is working and adjusting. And J-Rod, meanwhile, is just really going through right now on bottom. This is not where he wants to be. Now, we've speculated that one of the reasons that J-Rod's submission defense is so good is because he trains daily with the likes of Craig Jones, Nicky Ryan, Ethan Kralenstern, Damian Anson, and of course his big brother Nick Rodriguez, who's next champion, Isaac Michelle, all the killers that they've got there at the B team in Austin, Texas. And training with those guys, you're definitely going to work on your submission defense. So I feel that Rod here, J-Rod is able to survive, but that's just not enough. He needs to he needs to escape. He's got just over three minutes. He needs to escape. Otherwise, it's very clear which way this match is going to go. Well, I think J-Rod's moving with as much urgency as he can without giving anything away. Uh, right now, he's not in a spot where you want to explode and be a little reckless with your actions. And Jacob Couch is using that to his advantage right now. This is complete control, complete domination from top. And uh, again, looking to make the adjustments required to get the finish. He's got just less than three minutes left and has to be uh, very pleased with how this is going. Very, very tight control there from Couch. Minutes, Hasn't Jay. really lost an inch throughout the last seven minutes or more. J-Rod is very calmly defending from bottom. Seems to be really struggling. But now that you can see, there's a bit more urgency. There's a oh, now he almost bridge. feeds the arm all the way across, but J-Rod does well to get it back on the, the correct side of the head to defend this choke. And there's another battle going on at the other end of the body. You can see the feet against feet. You can see that J-Rod is trying to stomp his feet in. And there you see the viewer. Actually, he's trying to get his hooks and to try and sort of uncross those feet yeah, yeah, of J-Rod, and, 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 excuse me, of, to, of Couch, and to get his, so uh, to make some space so that he can hip escape. There's a lot going on in this battle. You might be better off doing that, Jay. There well, you we go. see Couch now turtling, move off to the back because now, finally, J-Rod has been able to get his shoulders off the mat, but actually, no, Couch is putting him back. You're good. His back flat to nice, nice. the mat. And right now, elbow to knee. I thought he may transition with it and go to the back, but... As we saw, it was almost impossible to submit Jacob Rodriguez from the back in that last match. So maybe Couch is like, no, I'm just nice, nice. I'm going to stay here. I feel more comfortable. And there we see Jacob for the first time. Briefly release a look at that attack. And now he's grinding his way right back into it. Matt Couch is going face first into that defense, trying to combat the hand fighting there of, uh, of Jay Rodriguez. And Jay's, oh, even going for a little bit of a smother there across the face, hand across the mouth, impede the breathing. And now he's on the back, body triangle on. Less than a minute left, 50 seconds here. And Jay Rod, uh, to his credit, gets out of a very dire situation. His back defense we know is incredible. That's what we saw a lot of in his match with Giancarlo. But still, frying pan into the fire? Frying pan into the fire, there's not a lot of time left. You're right, the Jacob Rodriguez's back defense, phenomenal in the face of a fellow ADCC trials winner, Giancarlo Bodoni. Will Couch have any success from this position? Oh, there we go, the hand fighting is really crucial here in this position. 
They're right on the safety area now, right on the edge of bounds, and they go back into this mount position. Might be safer to put them back into the center of the mat here as they settle down and Couch is on top once again, but the clock will run down just seconds remaining. Time. Well, we will be back in a moment with the official decision, but I think it's clear we can call it right now. Jacob Couch definitely took the win in that match. I think the official decision is merely a formality in this case. Very one-sided match and a very strong performance from Jacob Couch. Yeah, really outstanding word there from the Hillbilly Hammer. Let's take a look at some of the best moments from that match as we saw complete domination from the Daisy Fresh athlete here. Jacob Couch took the mat here, and man, it was it was relentless. I mean, there's nothing else to say. We opened up with a guard pull, and then immediately started chasing the neck, making things, you know, it was a little casual of a start for J-Rod. He's very confident in his defense. I really want to see early. this Kimura. Here it is. We'll see the Kimura attack right here. Just ripped it on. Absolutely ragged on that Kimura attack. Swept Rodriguez with it and maintained just pure control, just dominance from that moment on. Didn't give up anything, was looking for a variety of submission attacks, including the arm triangle from the top. And uh, as we said, no real question at all as to who earned that victory. There is ADCC World Championships organizer, Mo Jassim, congratulating Couch at the corner. But now over to our announcer for the official decision. After 15 minutes, the judges have made the decision. Your winner, by unanimous decision, representing Pedigo Submission Fighting, the Hill Billy Hammer, Jacob Cow. Yeah, absolutely. Dominant performance, really. Not much more you can say about a match as one-sided as that, other than the fact that I would also describe it as somewhat surprising. Yeah, Jacob Couch, like we said in the beginning of that match, you think of it as a leg locker. Zero leg lock attacks in that matchup. Just top game domination. Well done to the Hillbilly Hammer. Well, we'll pass it over to Kendall Rusing for a conversation with our winner, a very happy, a very jubilant looking Jacob Hillbilly Hammer Couch. All right, we are here with the Hillbilly Hammer.